Fredericks, the congressman will see you now. Old Fort McHenry is serving very well now as General Hospital Number 2. Our wounded soldiers from Europe are receiving plenty of care. Excellent. Thank you for your report about Fort McHenry. You know, I think after the war, that place should be designated a national monument. That's a great idea, Congressman. By the way, I came across this old letter. It was written by one of the defenders of Fort McHenry in the War of 1812. Mother and father, the lads here at Fort McHenry are getting some well-earned rest. I'm nearly the only one up and about, so I'm dashing off this letter. Here are my thoughts about our present predicament. As you know, these are dark days for our republic. Our army has been routed from Canada and defeated at Bladensburg. Now Washington, D.C. has been burned to the ground, even the U.S. Capitol and the Executive Mansion. Alexandria was looted as well. The British will certainly attack Baltimore next by land and sea, and Fort McHenry will be the linchpin of the city's defense. Our cause in declaring this war was just. Britain interfered with our trade, impressed Americans into her navy, and prevented our nation's territorial expansion. However, perhaps we have bitten off more than we can chew. I have been keeping my spirits up by singing songs. My favorite is an excellent tavern song known as To Anacreon in Heaven. I'll write out the lyrics here. Major Armistead has been preparing our thousand men at the fort for that gigantic naval bombardment that we are sure to face soon. I cannot help but wonder, what flag will be atop the flagpole once the bombardment stops? Will the broad stripes and bright stars of our flag still wave, or will we have raised the white flag of surrender? I only hope I would not live to see that terrible outcome. Well, he didn't know it at the time he wrote that letter but the fort would not be surrendered. The British Navy bombarded Fort McHenry for more than 24 hours, but the American flag was still flying on the morning of September 14th. When Francis Scott Key saw this, he quickly wrote the poem, The Defense of Fort McHenry, and had it published on September 17th with a note that it could be sung to the tune of Anacreon in Heaven. Their defeat at Fort McHenry convinced the British to cancel their plans to attack Baltimore. Fort McHenry was a turning point in the war that led to peace terms with the Treaty of Ghent in December and the official end to the war in February 1815. However, despite the conflict, Britain and the United States were soon again on friendly terms, and the song written by Francis Scott Key, now called the Star Spangled Banner, became more and more popular as a patriotic song. Every September 12th, Defenders Day was celebrated in Baltimore. Our young defender eventually became one of the dozen old defenders still alive in 1888. The last of the old defenders passed away in 1894. Well, after a long period of peace in Europe, 1914 brought war again, and this time it is the Great War. Well, I need to get to my next meeting. Safe travels to Baltimore. Thank you, Congressman. Congressman Linthicum. Isn't that such a great first-hand account of one of the old defenders of Fort McHenry? And now, the U.S. and Britain are allies, and we are going to their aid in Europe. Yes, that's absolutely true. It's interesting you should bring up the Battle of Baltimore. I just received a letter from the Daughters of 1812. From the President, Ella Virginia Howell Holloway. Isn't she the one with the tall beaver hat? Yes, that's the one. This is what she wrote. In our country's present crisis, the need is felt for a national anthem. 
one not only recognized by usage, but legalized by an act of Congress. And, as the Star-Spangled Banner was written by a native of Maryland during the war to which the society owes its origin, we would, therefore, most respectfully request that you, as a representative of this state, place before the House of Congress a bill to make Francis Scott Key's immortal song the national anthem. By Joe! Excellent idea, Congressman. Well, the proposal didn't pass, but I kept trying with each new session of Congress, and it finally passed. It was signed into law in 1931 by President Herbert Hoover. By Jove!